Good morning, everybody. Pastor Steve, thank you so much for joining me for today's devotion. Before we get started, I want to take a minute and say happy birthday to my beautiful bride, Monisa. Today's her birthday. Appreciate y'all praying for her. I'm so thankful for her and the blessings she's been in my life. Well, today we begin the book of 2 Corinthians. We're in chapter 1. Hopefully you've already read this chapter and in your journal what God has said to you. Um, the verse that spoke to me is verse 12 of chapter 1. So let's read that verse and then talk about it a little bit. Verse 12. Paul says in the New American Standard Translation, For our proud confidence is this, the testimony of our conscience, the testimony of our conscience that in holiness and godly sincerity, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God, we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially toward you. Now, you'll remember some of the people in Corinth were upset with Paul for different reasons. And uh, one of those reasons was he had promised to visit them at a certain time, but circumstances had changed and he was not able to. And some people... Uh, just attacked his integrity, his credibility, and accused him of not being a man of his word, a man of character, of lying, if you will. And what he's saying here is you're wrong, that I have conducted myself among you in the world, but especially among you, he says in verse 12, with um, holiness and godly sincerity, and my conscience is clear. Um. The ancient manuscripts, the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, when it comes to that one word in verse 12, that in my Bible is translated holiness, or in yours may be uh, simplicity, are divided, whether it's the word for holiness or simplicity. But the idea is that he was, holiness means to do what is right. Uh, simplicity is to, to not be manipulative So there's some overlap between those words Paul is saying that I was not manipulative I did what was right And then in godly sincerity um, Guys, there was a legitimate reason That I could not come when I had initially said I could come And he talks about that later And we'll discuss that in a future a devotion, but he said, I've acted in, an, in, a, in a godly and sincere way toward you. I've not lied. I've not manipulated you. I've, 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 you have made some wrong assumptions about me. And he goes on to talk about that. And there's a tendency in us as human beings to sometimes make assumptions about people when we don't have all the information, right? Um, this is July. And uh, recently on a Sunday evening, we had our patriotic celebration of freedom. When I came here as pastor more than 30 years ago, I started the celebration of freedom service uh, in our church. Didn't have it before that. I started it where we recognize veterans and do patriotic music. And uh, we've done it uh, just about every year since. And this year it was on a Sunday, Sunday evening. And over those years, I've missed it twice when I was on vacation. And uh, the reason I was on vacation those two times was because of extended family commitments, and it was the only time we could vacation with our family. Uh, particularly with Monisa working with the school system, our vacation slots are limited pretty much to the summer, and that's when our family could gather. So I missed twice in 30 years. And the last time was about 10, 12, 13 years ago. And that Sunday morning, we were all, we'd were we left for vacation like on Friday, I think. And that Sunday morning while we were driving to worship, because we normally go to church when we're on vacation, I called one of our pastors here just to say, hey, how are things going? Want, you know, I'm praying for you and for the, the service, the, the preacher, the service today, the choir and everything. And just wanted to encourage him. And he mentioned during the service that I had called to say, I was praying for the church and thinking about it. Well, that afternoon... I received a text message from one of our members very angry with me and critical of me. Uh, how dare I uh, miss that service? He thought he thought I had started my vacation that morning. I'd actually started my vacation on Friday. I had started. He thought I'd started it that morning. He just assumed that. And why could I not wait until after the service? And because I missed that service, here was his insinuation. I didn't care about veterans, and a whole lot of people in the church feel that way. I don't care about veterans in the military. And uh, I have to be honest, I got pretty angry. I really did. I got angry. 
I got mad, if you want to put it in. I mean, I got mad. And I, I thought, how dare he? I'm the one who started this service. I'm the one who started this service. He doesn't know my circumstances, that this was the only time my family could be on vacation, and I did not start my vacation this morning. I started it Friday. How dare he get mad at me and make all those accusations and assumptions? And I replied to him. Now, I don't remember what I said in my reply. Uh, I, I really don't. But uh, I share that story because all of us have had experiences like that. I, I've made assumptions about other people. You've made other assumptions about other people. Other people have made assumptions about you, and they've, they've been wrong. Correct? Yeah, they've been wrong. And, and that's what Paul is saying here. Guys, my conscience is clean. I, I've been honest and sincere, but you're making all these false assumptions about me. And in today's culture, as divided as we are, as polarized as we are, as overly politicized as everything is, it is amazing how people in the church and in the community are guilty of that sin, making assumptions about people. And I share that story just to highlight it uh, and say, don't do that. We, we would be so much better off if we would learn to give people the benefit of the doubt instead of always assuming the worst about, about people and then gossiping about them and criticizing them based on our assumptions, not on facts. The Bible's clear. The Bible says that is a sin. That is a sin. So stop it. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow.